Good morning and welcome to this week's edition of Encompass Live. I am your host, Krista Porter, here at the Nebraska Library Commission. Uh, Encompass Live is the Commission's weekly webinar series where we cover a variety of topics that may be of interest to libraries. We broadcast the show live every Wednesday morning at 10 a.m. Central Time, but if you're unable to join us on Wednesdays, that's fine. We do record the show as we are doing today and it will be posted to our um, Encompass Live website later for you to watch at your convenience. So, um, and I'll show you at the end of today's show how to access um, our recordings. Both the live show and the archive recordings are free and open to anyone to watch. So please do share with your uh, friends, family, neighbors, colleagues, anyone you think might be interested in any of the topics we have on the show. Uh, for those of you not from Nebraska, the Nebraska Library Commission is the state agency for libraries here, uh, similar to your state library. And so we provide services to all types of libraries in the state. So you'll find shows on Encompass Live for all, for all types of libraries, uh, public, academic, K-12, um, museums, archives, archives, corrections, uh, really our only criteria is anything that has a library <laughs> or is doing something library related. Uh, we have guest speakers that come on the show from all across the country and in Nebraska, um, but we also have Nebraska Library Commission staff that do sessions for us. And today, that is what we have. It is um, the last Wednesday of the month, which means it is Pretty Sweet Tech Day. Yay. Um, it also means that October is almost over. Oh, no. Where did it go? <laughs> <laughs> um, and so Pretty Sweet Tech Day is um, every last Wednesday of every month. Amanda Sweet joins us to talk about something techie related. Um, we have other techie things on the show sometimes too, but you can always depend on Amanda being here with us at the end of the month. And today we're going to learn all about uh, chatbots. It's true. That can really help you do all your repetitive stuff, which I love the sound of that. <laughs> Ready? <Right, you know. laughs> so go ahead and take it away, Amanda. So first in the chat if you could tell me does your library already use a chatbot or not because i'm willing to bet that a lot of you probably already do and you might be looking for other alternatives or other options to do it mm. but oh, while you're typing that in or pondering it i'll kind of go over what you're going to find out about today um, I'm going to kind of redefine chatbot because from what you when you first learned about chatbots, there are a lot more different types of them now, and there are different more like categories and little offshoots of what you can do with chatbots. And then I'll go over some of the there's a variety of planning guides for chatbots that are available online, but I'll share the one that I kind of adapted that seems to be working for people so far. And then I'll share some of the tools that are out there that go according to level of difficulty for learning how to use it, which is kind of the most common way that people have asked for recommendations for tools, is how long is it going to take me to learn it? Mm -hmm. Am I going to need a lot of help setting it up? And is it going to be hard to maintain it and keep it going once it's out there? And then I'll just kind of go through some little tips and tricks that I picked up along the way. And so this, I'm not actually going to play it. I embedded it into the slides just for your future reference. I'm actually just going to talk about it right now. But if you want to actually get, if you want to share what a chatbot is and you're trying to make the case for adding a chatbot to your library, you can use this video or something similar to it just to explain the concept and kind of communicate the idea. But a chatbot in general, right now, they're actually better suited to handling really, really, really specific tasks. The chatbots that you've probably most commonly interacted with are like through Amazon and through places where you do e-commerce. So they're designed to handle specific troubleshooting questions. And I'll pull open Amazon's Actually, the easiest way to do it is to show this slide here. These are two common examples of a chatbot that you've probably seen. Um, the version on the right is actually through a service called Mobile Monkey. 
Mobile Monkey is one of like the top rated, easiest to set up and use. And you'll see that it starts off with an introductory question. And this is going to be the first thing that the user engages with when they're clicking and using your chat bot. And then you'll see where it's a, on the right hand side where it says set it for free Facebook group product support. You kind of want to set the stage right away for what that chat bot is actually geared to do. Otherwise, people are just going to start typing in any old random thing and be frustrated when it doesn't do what it what it thinks doesn't know what to say. Yeah. Yeah. So you can tell off that the mobile monkey version on the right, the goal of that organization was to just do three things and interact with three different types of object or three different types of items. So when it says that chatbots are designed to handle specific tasks, this is what it means. It means that you have to assign it different categories, otherwise people are gonna be super, super confused. So the right-hand side uses a button system, but the left-hand side is actually, it has an AI baked into it. You don't have to know AI to set it up. It's already built into all these tools. But the reason that you can just type in any old thing and the chatbot will respond back relatively normally is because it's using that AI tool to kind of understand what you're saying and kind of learn the context, and then it responds accordingly. And usually the, the tool on the left is usually a little more expensive than the tool on the right, because the tool on the right is rules-based. You tell it what to do, it spits it out and does it. Mm -hmm. The tool on the left is AI based, so it is it has that system baked in. You don't have to do anything with it, but it's more expensive because it was set up so that it would understand what people are saying without you telling it what you're saying. If that makes sense. Mm -hmm. And and I'll mention too, uh, you said that uh, the previous slide that I had the video there, um, the slides will be available afterwards. Um, this is all in Google Slides. So when we have the archive posted up, you'll have access to all of these slides as well too in that uh, video. And you may have also seen chat box that have like a baked in personality. So I'll go back over to here. On the left hand side, if you see the girl in the icon, they so the chatbot best practices recommend that you start kind of assigning a mini personality to your chatbot just so that people are more willing to engage with it but they use an animated character because they don't actually want people to believe this is a real human when people think that they're talking to a real human and find out that it's a computer you lose trust from people and people also it gets more confusing to actually get transferred over to a real human because, well, they thought they were already talking to one. So be really careful about kind of with the face that you're putting on your chat bot when you're designing it. And that's why I pull open this example right away. And so the rest of it is just to I already talked about the AI versus rules base, so I'm just going to skip over to how chatbots are actually commonly used. Um, Amazon uses it basically to automate their fact sheet. It uses it to funnel you over to say, I want to get help using this service and I need to, and I'm trying to funnel my way over to a fact page. So you would click on a button that says, I'm looking for help with Kindle Fire. I'm using the Kindle Fire 10. This is the appropriate tutorial sheet for Kindle Fire 10. And if I need help beyond that, I can interact with like a natural language processing agent to get more answers about it. And in the library specifically, you'd be able to use it to say, we're open from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. Monday through Friday and on 10 a.m. to noon on Saturday. And we offer black and white printer, color printer. Um, we have 10 computers in our computer lab and 15 tablets available for checkout. 
along with like a 3D printer that you can use. And you can start automating it through so that people understand the services and resources you have available. And it would basically go through this system. Um, hi, welcome to the Nebraska Library Commission. Would you like to learn about our services? Then you would have a system of buttons that say um, book club kits, tech kits of the mail. Um, Krista, my mind's going blank. Can you list some services through the commission? Um, oh, like some of like the regular things we do. Um, yeah. <clears throat> uh, grants, um, E-rate, um, talking book and braille. You said that, right? Yeah. Um, I, no, I thought it really hard. I didn't say it. Yeah. <laughs> <Accreditation> <laughs> certification. You know, we've got lots of really good base, really good info pages for all the things that we do. Um, the discounts on products and services and uh, yeah. Nebraska Access, Nebraska Memories, maybe One Book, One Nebraska, which just got announced this past weekend. <laughs> And so that way, like, it's very it's easy ones because it's just like send you, show you right to that page, just that page, mm -hmm. just that page, and there you go. Yeah. And like that, so that would actually be a different way that people would interact with the library commission page is that like a little chat box, chat bot would pop open in the right hand corner of your screen, say, Hi, welcome to the Nebraska Library Commission. Which services would you like? And then it would be just this little list of but like mm -hmm. menu options down here. They'd mm -hmm. click it and then it would shoot them over to like a link for a landing page. Mm -hmm. And that landing page has like it would you can click it straight over to the website or you can keep making them live in this little chat box until they get more specifically where they want to go. And this would be something too. I mean, I was, we have so many things that we do here at the, you know, at this library commission. Uh, yeah. That would be a lot to list as we were just doing here. But um, something I assume you, we would, could do is, you know, take, look at your um, website statistics and where do people most likely go? Yeah. Uh, or what are they looking for most often? If you have a search box, just a gener generic usual search boxes on your website, what are they constantly looking for? So the most popular things may be put up here first, not everything that you do, because that's a lot. <laughs> and, and sometimes there actually is a resource that you want to promote, but people just don't know it's a thing that they can search to. Like, um, in the beginning, people didn't know that they could even search for the tech kits of the mail because they didn't know that it was a thing. So, so you, you wouldn't want find to promote that as something, a... so put it right yeah. up there. Yeah. Yeah. And because how can you search for something if you don't have the keyword for it? And so there's like a message and another, I just got asked by a library about setting up a chat bot, one for workforce development resources and two for digital liter like digital literacy resources. So it would basically be, and I'll jump back over to my little standby here. Um, hello, welcome to the public library. Uh, which digital literacy tutorials are you looking for? And it would say, it would have a menu that says job search skills, parenting and technology, um, uh, teen tech guides and like just a little list of your most common options. And then people would be able to click on that button and it would shoot them over to like more specific categories. And then once they found the category that they needed, they'd open up the tutorial and then the little chat bot would say, did you find the resource that you were looking for? And you'd get, get like a little smiley or a frowny, and then you can use that to improve your chatbot as you go along. So like your chatbot can be used to navigate specific resources or category types. And um, OverDrive would also be a really good candidate for that, or I guess OverDrive is more or less Libby now, but you could add in like a little chat bot that says, welcome to the public library, would you like help using Libby? And then you could say little buttons that say set up an account, troubleshooting, 
mm -hmm. um, accessing ebook, audiobook, and like all the common different tutorials. That way you don't keep getting that repetitive question over and over again. And any library that's been looking for more smooth ways to get people registered for events, you can also use it to as like an event information and registration form. And you can also use it to basically do like a chatbot story time. If you've ever used the Q robot, the Q robot actually has a chatbot that is geared specifically towards storytelling. Hmm. So you can use that to like engage like a younger audience or to just um, give people something to do when they're bored. It's one of the top used apps on uh, Alexa and Google, like and the Google services. Like my dad uses the tell me a story function just because it's funny. <laughs> <laughs> and he likes to entertain my niece and nephew. Sure, sure. Yeah. <laughs> but we can move on from that. <laughs> if anyone has any like preferred chatbot use cases or ideas of how they want to use a chatbot, you can also type it in, let me know. Yeah, yeah, let's now use the question section. Um, Amanda had asked earlier if anyone is using chatbots at their library. Um, I only had one person reply and said they, they're not. Um, so I'm assuming maybe the other ones who else is here, who all else is here is not as well if they didn't chime up and say, oh yeah. So everyone's interested in doing this, I assume. Wait. <laughs> all right, so once you have kind of your, <clears throat> what you act a better idea of what you want to do with the chat bot you can start kind of choosing what kind of chat bot would be best suited to meet your needs so these are kind of like the main categories of chat bot i already talked about that natural language processing one which is basically you can type in any old thing and the chat bot will just try to figure out what you were trying to say and then it'll go through its little menu of what you gave the information resources you made available to it to route you in the right way. Um, that is a, that one's a little harder to set up because it's kind of like the wild, wild west of chatbots. You never know what's going to come out of people's mouths next. And the scripted and quick reply chatbots would be the example of like little buttons on the right where they just have to go through that little routed map where they only have so many options they can choose from. And the service and action chatbots are the ones that are geared to do specific tasks. So if you go over to this use case here, it would be the like a digital literacy resource navigation would be a service and um, like filling out a form would be an action so if you did like event registration it would be a service action chatbot and a social messaging chatbot like things like whatsapp and some of like the popular social medias they actually have chatbots that can be integrated into your website and kind of synced up that way so I'll get to that when I get to the planning guide. It's a whole thing. But the, and the context enabled chatbots is like natural language processing and AI on crack. Like it just, it does all the things. And the voice enabled chatbots are like the ones that my dad like to, likes to use where he just says, Alexa, tell me a story. Or like, and it'll spout out kind of like any old story or he really, really likes to make it fart because my nephew likes to hear farts. So, <laughs> <Sure>. <laughs> and so this is kind of like your rundown of what your options are. So you can use this as you're planning out what you want to do, just so that you know what chatbots are capable of doing. And so this is kind of like my quick preview at a glance of the chatbot tools that are actually halfway decent. There are 8 million and one of them that are out there that I'm not saying the other ones are bad. It just, these are the ones that I actually looked at and people got some use out of. So I just classified them out based on easy and halfway decent to use. And the advanced one is you basically need to know 
you you pretty much need to have a developer like you can outsource it to a third party and they can develop it for you or if you happen to have an in-house person who's really comfortable with code they can do it for you but if you see anything in the advanced section that's pretty much what you're getting into mm -hmm. the easy section is you can just download a you can go to a website or you can download an app onto your computer and it is like a simple template system that will walk you through step by step and you can have like a chat bot set up in less than five minutes and so the the ones in the easy section are really good for to automate a fact sheet to answer the common questions like hours services direct people over to tutorials you can use it for the services and resources some of them you can use for the event information registration not all of them um, it depends on what kind of integration you need into like a calendar or a registration platform not all the freebies or the easy versions have that integration baked into it and you can also use it for like a to an extent you can use it for chatbot story time and the intermediate one that zendesk one has the most um, flexibility it's a paid one but it's also got the highest number of integrations and it's got the highest number of features for the ones that I looked at anyway. And Ada's like middle of the road and IBM's visual chatbot builder is like the e the easier version of the Watson assistant. Visual huh. chatbot builder is no code, but it can still do quite a lot because it's IBM. And so when you're starting to get into actually setting up and planning your chatbot, what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna jump out of the slideshow here, and I'm going to copy and paste this into just a Google Doc. And I'll show you what it would look like to just do kind of a quick and easy fill out of these questions. It won't take long, I promise. So when you're asking, when you're trying to figure out what you actually want your chatbot to do, the easiest thing to do is actually just walk through your day in the library. And if you've ever used a worksheet called um, Day in the Life, mm -hmm. and here's hoping I actually called it that and I didn't call it some worksheet category. I did call it some worksheet category. Confounded. Uh, da, 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 da. I'm going to do a quick scroll through my 8 million Canva templates on here. If I can't find it right away. Uh, da, 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 da. Then I'll give up the good fight and just find the equivalent online. I did not realize that I had made this many here. <laughs> we love Canva. <laughs> right? Yeah. So in the library, you would basically just go step by step and say, um, we open up the library, um, pull books out of the book drop, um, respond to early, like the emails that stacked up in the inbox and reference desk answers these questions circulation desk answers these questions and just kind of start making a running list of what your entire day looks like once you have this this is tedious but i promise it's helpful um, once you have this all laid out you can start establishing where the pain points are in your day if you start saying once we we got our circ or like our circ desk people got everything checked in, but now they're starting to get a line of people that are asking for 
help setting like getting their tablet set up or they're asking for help for the computer stations in the front then you can start saying okay we keep getting questions about um how to use overdrive we keep getting questions about um what time different activities are in the library then you can start saying okay instead of having to call up our circ people or call up our reference people every time we're going to start putting a little mini kiosk this kiosk is just going to have a tablet that has a chatbot loaded onto it that chatbot is going to have basic information about our hours it'll talk about the return policy it'll talk about the um which events are going on that day and it'll talk about which events are going on that week because we ran through our day in the life here and we pinpointed the most common questions that we get and the common things that we run into that we just don't have time to do and tracking out the emotions of staff to find out where people are frustrated and where people are feeling okay can be really helpful and tracking out where you are in the library will help to find out whether that chatbot is going to be embedded into a separate kiosk that's just set out, or if it's going to be embedded into like a computer lab workstation so that anyone can access it, or if it's embedded onto like a, the library's website so people can get to it from home and from anywhere there may be. and so that is your basic uh, and for this i'll actually put in the link to this template just in case people want to use it so i'll go in here and link it there now you have that canva template just in case. Cool. So let's assume that you filled out the Canva template and found out that you want to be able to direct people over to digital literacy resources. And overdrive tutorials which kind of the same thing but you know you get the idea and I'm going to turn this into a one and this into a two so now when it says what is your communication workflow and where does the chat bot fit into this this is where you would start filling out like a little um, and this one will actually switch back over to the dots. So patron walks into library, approaches front circ desk, asks circ desk for help with digital literacy circ desk sends patron to reference desk and reference desk looks up tutorials on resource portal ref desk asks uh, like narrowing down or focusing questions i mean they ask reference they ask reference questions understand patron problem correct tutorial or resource
and online or library service options. So the online or service options would be a patron walked into the library. They said they really needed help learning Excel because they needed to get a job. And some libraries would wind up sending them over to like LinkedIn Learning or to uh, the Goodwill Foundation to be able to get an Excel tutorial. Others will say that there's a local community college that offers an Excel class for low cost. Others will say that they offer an Excel class in the library. So that's when you start prioritizing which one of those options you want to promote first and how you're supposed to be able to handle those different questions. So this is just your understanding of what people do. Your next question is, where does a chatbot fit into this equation? Is this actually a good problem for our chatbot to solve? Or is there some other better way to do it? So then you start asking yourselves alternatives to say, if we had a chatbot available, like, so how many people actually choose to go from the circulation desk over to the reference desk and stand in line to get their question answered? Are you losing people as you're making that shift over? In which case, you'd want to actually embed a chatbot in the circ desk station so that people don't have to make that leap. And you'll, you'll keep and retain more customers that way because you're making life easier for them. And you can also make it so that the chatbot with your digital literacy resources is actually baked into your library's website because you look back at that first step and say, the only reason a patron walked into the library is because they had a clear and set goal that they wanted to learn Excel. But if people don't know which technology and resources exist and what their options are, they would never walk into the library to begin with. So if we put that digital literacy guide, that digital literacy chatbot into the library's website in the, to begin with, the people who never knew that the library had parenting and technology guides and teen tech safety guides and teen tech um, like fun activity guides, the people who didn't know about those would now know and then they'd start using the stuff. Did I explain that halfway decently or do I need more coffee? <laughs> yeah. uh, it, it made sense to me. Oh, good. Else out there need to, uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it, it's, it's the kind of thing that the libraries struggle with all the time. They don't, right. somebody asked about a thing that we've been doing forever and well. <laughs> right, yeah. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> So at this point, this is where a lot of people start busting out their post-it notes. And I'll, I'm going to drag over this here. So this little, chat, this little chatbot building guide is going to be your best friend as you start putting this together. And I'm going to pull, I'm scrolling up. You can close your eyes for a second if you don't like the scrolling motion but I'm looking for my little post-it planning guide that walks through the workflow of what people have to go through to get where they want to go because that is the best visual representation that you can use to route out your chatbot. Oh, come on. It's a big, bright, colorful post-it chatbot. There, here it is. Peace. So what they're using here is a tool called Miro. Uh, Miro has both free and paid options, but I use the free version. And basically you can just pull up digital sticky notes and you can say, patron walks into the library, um, in this case, they already know what they want. 
and now they went to the circ desk, they need to go to the ref desk. The ref desk will then look in their little, they'll start asking questions and start narrowing focus to which option that the person wants. So you'll start laying out stickies for the path people have to take and each, every time you have to make a decision, that's a new little branch in the tree. This is like a decision tree. And this is going to help you lay out and plan the chat bot so that you know the steps people are going to take to get where they want to go. And then this translates over into the actual chat bot itself. And you'll find out in that workflow of, how, of where people go, what is handled by the bot itself and what is handled by a human because if you're going to be sending people over to um, get one-on-one -on -one help with learning a specific part of excel your bot can't do that but your bot can do an easy transfer over to the reference desk so that the ref desk can easily step in to take that over and if a person has to be waiting in line for too long or they have to manually physically dial a phone or um, send it or figure out what they want to say in an email, that's when you start losing people more and more when they have to, the more work a person has to do, the less likely they are to follow through to get to the end goal. Mm -hmm. And it's what Google has done to people. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, yes, eventually they may have to actually talk to a real human. I, I'm I'm all about doing as much online and e email as yeah. I can. But yeah. you know, it's gonna happen at some point that you're gonna have to yeah, yeah depending on your your issue, your question, whatever. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And get them as well, far as you can without having to do that. I mean so, I mean the whole basis of this we talked about at the beginning. There's so many things that we already have the information on our website. We just need to get them to the right place. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Like, I don't know even what the math on it, the percentage is at least 75, 80% of the things that I answer in emails or um, phone calls is just the information was out there. Yeah. They just didn't realize it. And I just go to our website and send them the info and the right page to go to. I do it. I'm the chat bot. <laughs> right. But, yeah. you, know, so, you know, making, you know, taking your time out from doing that. And yeah. Having so, and for you. like, like the sheer number of people, like I just went to like a couple of different conferences and like the sheer number of people who walked up to me and said, I kept meaning to email you and ask you da da da. <laughs> or I kept meaning to call you and ask you da da da. Mm -hmm. And then they would like ask me in person or they would like, but then when I just set up like a little button that says, click this button to fill out this form or click this button to ask this question, then they don't have to go through a separate little service to write out an email. It kind of prompts more them people to do it. it. Yeah. Yeah. Add an easy button. <laughs> so um, in this case when you're actually designing your chat bot it would look like patron opens website pop-up appears in bottom right chatbot greeting Welcome to I would just say which digital literacy resource would you like? And
And you can add as many different categories on here as you want. You can even break out like which makerspace resource would you like or which um, job search resource would you like and say like resume building or um, interview assistance. So you can break it out however you want to do. You just want to make sure you have that really specific greeting so that people know this is the narrow topic that this chatbot can help you with. Mm -hmm. And then this would be the decision tree. And it would send you over to So user chose parenting and technology. New menu opens that says um, cyber safety, or I'll say cyber bullying, um, recommended apps, uh, teen tech guide, online communication, there's a mess of these, but I'll just leave it at that. Just keep going. Yeah. Yeah. And then, so if they chose Teen Tech Guide, new menu opens, link to specific website or guide, or link to information page about upcoming workshop, guest speaker, etc. Link to local partner resource. And then it would go to when someone chooses from that menu, question pops up. Did you find the resource you were looking for? Smiley Frowny. Yeah, Frowny is anyway. I'll take it, whatever. Neutral face. And then you can use this as your feedback to say, this is working, this isn't working. So that is basically just your quick and easy mapping for what your chatbot would actually look like. And you can either put it into a big long list like this, or you can put it into your post-it style like, I'm gonna close this, close this. Oh no, did I close my post-it style? Doesn't matter, you saw it. <laughs> you can put it into the post-it menu with like a little decision tree. It's cool looking. And so then this question is whether you need to actually have your chatbot be compatible with different social media webs or social media platform services or compatible with different telecommunication software. So if you want to be able to directly forward someone over to a to your to the front desk phone or if you want to be able to directly transfer someone over to um, like a Instagram or so or like Facebook, then you need to know that the service you choose is integrated with that platform. So let's say that you want to be able to integrate with phone system or forward 
two specific numbers. And you also want to integrate with WordPress. So then you have your criteria set for what you need to find for compatibility. And your budget is nothing. And um, anyone who wants to experiment. Then you want to set out a plan for how you're going to train and implement this chat bot because um, if you have a large staff, half the people aren't even going to know that it exists and is an option, or they're going to start getting calls or questions about it, and they're not going to know how to answer them. So you can start saying one day workshop, then online fact portal, knowledge base for staff, or monthly webinar. I'll say monthly or yeah, monthly's fine. So how are you going to let staff know about this and support them in being able to implement it? And management training update guide. And then from the type of chatbot that you want to use, you would just go over to this slide here uh, da, 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 and figure out which one of these you want your chatbot to be able to do so that you know that you're choosing something that is like what you'll actually get out of the box. Otherwise, you're going to get some surprises. And so this one, we want the service or action chatbot and you want it to be able to do, and sometimes these overlap. So like the scripted quick reply is like that button one. And it also happens to be a service action because of what it's doing. So you want it, you want to know that it can do this on the right hand side. Oh, you don't need my email. What type of chatbot do you want? Service action, button based. Not all of the chatbots in the list that I provided can do both AI and button based um, chatbots. Mm -hmm. Some of them can only do button based and some of them can do like a hybrid between the two. So that's why I put that in the planning sheet so that you don't get any surprises. And in this case, we are going to use Tidio. So I've got just a few minutes left. So, and luckily it is super easy to actually set up Tidio. Mm -hmm. So Tidio is actually a, there are free and paid options. And it's basically just a template portal that you can use to set up. I, this, is, I, this is what the main dashboard for Tidio looks like. There are different templates that you can choose from that you can just set up. This is a really fun engagement tool that you can use just for kids that are wanting to do like a Halloween or a holiday activity just online, like bring kids in and get them interested. And they already have like pre-made color palettes and everything like that. And you can also choose like your specific end goal in mind. So in the library, increased sales would basically be bring more people into the library or increase circulation or increase um, makerspace use. So sales is just an increase in the amount of people using your stuff. And generating leads would basically, eh, I mean, you'll use that in some ways, but 
You just yeah. kind of translate it into library. Yeah. Use. Talk, yeah. About, talk about more, you know, uh, something we're always struggling, bringing in the non-library users. Yeah. But yeah. And solving problems is basically, I can't find a thing. I don't know what I want. I don't know what I need. Um, I am having trouble communicating with my teen about tech. I don't know what to do about cyberbullying. I don't know how to, I'm looking for a job. I'm looking for local job support resources. You're helping someone solve a problem and navigate to a solution. So let's explore templates for problem solving. And I am going to go over to yeah, da, 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 da. Oh, cool. They added a they have an AI response. Ooh, they added stuff. I like that. <laughs> yeah. So I'll go over to automate repetitive answers and we'll use this template. And I'll just click that and say use template. Loading, loading, loading. And then I'll click on this one. So you click on this first step and then it'll pop open like a little prompt where you'll put in the question. This is a trick question because most patrons don't actually use the term digital literacy. They have no idea what it means. <laughs> but, and then you can go over to, click over to the next one, and you can start automating your answers. And this is where you can start saying, how did it go? So I just toggled over and said, um, it'll ask basically ask for feedback as to whether they got what they were looking for. And you can also, um, if you want to be able to get more specific about how you're guiding people over to where they, like what you want, you can also add in images and different things that'll specifically describe what they're looking for. And, come on. And the delay time is um, how much time goes in between each different prompt. So you don't want to overwhelm people by pop, like popping up or open a new question every second because they won't have time to read it. So it's defaulted to say, wait four seconds between each question so people have a little time to process. And then you can start asking like different questions so that you can, um, let's say that the next repetitive answer question is Excel questions or Excel resources. And you can also go through and say, you can give your options in here. Um, parenting. Add text. Um, job search. Word and Excel. and save and activate it doesn't like something in here let's find out what it is um it didn't like it because i had that little empty box where it thought i was going to upload an image mm -hmm. and i didn't upload it so it just said by the way did you know you had this and you didn't use it cool and then you can go through here and so this is where it'll actually, it'll start tracking the responses and the interaction with that form. Okay, that's yeah. actually good because someone just asked a, had asked a question about that. Oh, of course. Yeah. 
Yeah. Um, so I wanted to know, and this is a good question for what it leads into as well. Do any of the bots that were suggested track usage statistics? Yes. Um, yeah. I'm thinking about the usefulness of a bot to justify the need for adopting live chat based on how often it's used. So like, could you use your bot statistics, which the whole point of that is to help you answer these repetitive questions, but are there certain things that keep getting more in depth, I guess, that they need to talk to a real person. So then these statistics yeah. help yeah. they actually, now we really need a live chat. And this is our proof of that. And of course, this one doesn't have any stats loaded in yet, but it'll actually go day by day, the amount that it was interacted with. And different chatbots have different um, levels of uh, tracking. So for the most part, like the Tidio app will track what you need, mm -hmm. but you can also do more, like you can do a higher <clears throat> level of analytics with, um, when you get to the intermediate and advanced versions, you'll also get a higher level of analytics and tracking. Nice. And this Tidio one, it is, when you want to embed it over into your website, it's actually just a baked in widget. So when I go over into I'm logging into my WordPress website. And then going into the Tidio chat. Loading, loading, loading. Sipping, sipping, sipping. <laughs> It'll ask you to log in. And then it'll ask you which project you want to integrate into it. Loading, loading, loading. It's going a special kind of slow. Of course. <laughs> And then you can go into your pages or you can go into pages, posts, wherever you want it to live. Wait for it to eternally stop bouncing. Go into, I'm just going to add a new page. Doesn't matter, I'm going to delete it later. This, I'm on a training site now. This is basically like a platform for, like a playground for testing out different stuff. Then I'll go into this plus sign, go to browse all so I can get to my plugins and I am looking for wherever Tidio landed and just search it. Oh, you suck. Well, I can tell you where it used to be. <laughs> so the other thing I'm going to do is I will just try this because they may have updated it to just automatically embed. So let me test this out. I'm going to open up a different browser, open this.
Nope. So then there's another thing that I can try, which is, did I sync it to the right site and did I select the right project for embedding? Or did they update their instruction and you just need to Google a tutorial? I'm gonna go with the last one. Don't take this out on Tidio. This is a me thing. I should have run through this and found out if they updated their instruction for syncing stuff over because I've used eight billion tools <laughs> and sometimes I mix them. Yeah, it, that's technology for you. Yeah. <laughs> so don't take this out on Tidio. It's still an awesome tool. It just, you need a tutorial to get the updated instructions to sync it over to a page. Are there any other questions about chatbots and which ones to choose? Uh, let's see here. Yeah, does anybody have any other questions? We are a little after 11, but we started at 11 a.m. Central Time, um, but we just started a little after 10 a.m. Central Time, so that's okay with us. Um, we will stick, stay here and answer any questions you do have. Go ahead and type into the questions section of your GoToWebinar interface um, if you do have any questions. Comments, thoughts, uh, anything about um, chatbots? Are you going to use one in your at your on your library website? Are you thinking about trying it out? Um, you can always reach out to Amanda with any questions you have later. If you can't think of anything right now, that's great. If you start trying to work on one of these, and um, as Amanda just experienced, things don't seem to be doing what they should. <laughs> yeah. Uh, look for updated info, or yeah, reach out to Amanda. No problem. She will um, yeah. help you get things going. Nine times out of 10, you go to the Tidio tutorials and it's just right there. Yeah. So. It'd be too hard to figure. Yeah. Yeah. And they also have like an entire page full of tutorials. So, and they have like a whole getting started guide and like a nice. easy installation. So if you just go to that, it's got all the things. Tidio is awesome. And install Tidio. If you are using Nebraska libraries on the web, Tidio is already automatically installed into the WordPress installation. Oh, um, nice. okay. you would, <laughs> so you can skip this part for adding the plugin. And all you would have to do is create the free account for Tidio and set it up so that it goes through the little steps that you want it to and sync it over to, I'm scrolling down to the site, to the part where you embed it into a page. By default, the Tidio widget is located on the lower right hand corner. You can change position. Okay, so what happened is that when I when I synced it over to the site, it either synced to a different site or did not sync that specific chatbot that I just created. So it didn't know which one to pop in. So there you go. Yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> um. Yeah, and for those of you just wondering, the Nebraska Libraries on the Web Project, that's where here in Nebraska, um, at the Nebraska Library Commission, we will host websites for public libraries on WordPress installs for free. So if you are a Nebraska library and need a website for your library, contact Amanda and get one. It's true. Um, we have on, over 130 libraries now. I'm not sure what the number is at the moment. I know that's what it says in the site there. <laughs> I think it's up to like 137 or 130 something. Nice. Yeah. There's always new ones that, yeah. Yeah. Uh, and so we do have a question here that's more for me. Yes. And um, the recording for this webinar, yes. Uh, we record every week at Compass Live and it's posted to our um, website. Um, 
after today's show is ready there. Amanda's got it for me. Awesome. Uh, that's our main Encompass Live page. As you can see, you can just search Encompass Live, um, your search engine of choice. We're the only thing called that on the internet. <laughs> um, and you'll find our site. There's our upcoming shows and the link right there to archived Encompass Live shows. Go ahead and click on it, Amanda. And this is where um, this one will be. It'll be at the top of the list, most recent ones first. Um, should I should have it processed and ready sometime tomorrow. So everyone who attended today's webinar and registered for today's webinar will get an email directly from me letting you know. And it also gets posted onto our Facebook page and our social media as well. Um, on this archive page, while we're here, there is a search feature. So if you wanted to know if there was something we've done a particular show about, you can search for it. Um, you can find all the pretty sweet tech shows, yeah. <laughs> um, you can search the full show archives or the most recent 12 months, as you saw when Amanda scroll, scrolled down there. This is our full show archive going back to when Encompass Live premiered in January 2009. So um, there's a lot of uh, things there. So just keep that in mind when you're watching any of these archives. You can see it does give you the date when it, um, something was originally broadcast. So um, things may change over time so, uh, resources and information may be totally different services and products may have changed drastically or um no longer exist at all uh but for you know we're librarians and this is one thing we do keep things available for historical purposes and as long as we have somewhere to host ours it will always be there um right now all of our archives are on our youtube channel the nebraska library commission's youtube channel so um as long as we have youtube and a place to host them they will always be there if we ever need to move them somewhere else we do have our own in-house copies of all these archives too but for now um everything is right there on our youtube channel and if there are slides we put links to slides if there are handouts or other resources we put links to those um they, you know whatever the presenters have provided us with we will put links to so um our recordings are both also free and open to anyone so uh if you find something there you know share it as well <laughs> they never ex well that's how long do we keep recording? Yeah, they never expire. We never take them down, but the information might be come old and outdated. Some of them stand the test of time, no problem. Um, but uh, are you trying to find the an Encompass Lives Facebook page? Yeah. If you go back to the Encompass Live site, there's a link there on it. Sweet. Yeah, we have a link on the Encompass Live main page and on each event page, if people have dug down that far. There, right there, up to the right next to the um, logo. Yeah, oh. there you go. There we go. There's our Encompass Live website or Facebook page. If you like to use Encompass Live, give us a like over there. Um, we do reminders, like there's a reminder to log in today's show. If you scroll down, there's a you know, little intro to our presenters. Um, when the recording is ready, we, I also post a, a, a message up here letting people know that it's ready. Um, you can also follow the hashtag Encump Live, a little abbreviation for our show. Um, and when we do a um, pretty sweet tech one, I also add a pretty sweet tech hashtag too. And that's on our um, Facebook. We have Twitter, Instagram. I think that's what we're all using right now at the commission to promote stuff. Cool. Yeah. So anybody have any other questions for Amanda um, about her presentation about chatbots? Um, there's our upcoming schedule. Um, if you uh, if you want to sign up for any of our upcoming shows. Uh, I've got, so you'll see there's some open dates there. I'm working on confirming things for those different dates. So keep an eye on the calendar um, for you know, new things being added. I'm not sure what Amanda has on deck for next month for Pretty Sweet Tech. We'll find out. Oh, it's funny because I just said like, oh, I'll do this. And now I don't remember what that was anymore. <laughs> That's fine. We got a month to, to figure it out, but. <laughs> And you see, we even started getting into our January uh, 2023 shows. 
Um, you'll notice here we do have, I like to highlight this, Sally Snyder, our Children's News Services Librarian, every year does a series of presentations for us, one on the upcoming summer reading program, titles for that, and then a Best New Children's Books of this year and Teen, teen Books of this year, so what has come out in the previous year. Um, and we've got those added to our account, our schedule now, so if you, um, I know those are very, you know, people always waiting to hear what Sally titles that she's come up come across over the past year um, so those are all scheduled in there and then what titles she has um, found that might be good for next year's summer reading program uh, the theme of all together now oh, I was gonna do the internet librarian recap because that just ended oh right yeah internet librarian conference was just last week yeah if I had so, thought about it I would have done it this week but oh, oh that's well. pretty quick turn around it's for easy what happened last week. Turn, but, you know. <laughs> That's okay. Yeah, so next month, yeah, look for that. Um, we'll get a description up there specifically specifically for that. All right, I think we'll wrap things up then. Doesn't look like anybody had any other questions that came in while we were chatting here. Um, that's fine. You know where to reach out to Amanda um, about her presentation or myself about the show. So thank you, everybody, for being here. Good to see you again, um, Amanda. Uh, we'll see you in a month, <laughs> um, and hopefully we'll see some of you all uh, joining us on a, a future episode of Encompass Live. Cool. All right. Bye-bye. <laughs>